All right, we know how to add and subtract fractions. Now we're going to learn to multiply them. Good news, this is actually the easiest one. Fractions lend themselves very nicely to multiplication. And not only that, it works just the way you might guess that it would. When you're told to multiply fractions, you multiply the tops and you multiply the bottoms. So 4 times 3 makes 12, 6 times 5 makes 30. Now, it's very important when you get to this stage to see if you can reduce these. Are they reducible? Absolutely they are. What can you divide them by? Well, they're both even. We could divide by 2. They're divisible by 3. Or we could do both of those at once. We could divide the whole thing by 6. You can do 12 divided by 6, 30 divided by 6, and your answer comes out two-fifths. That's your answer in lowest terms. It won't reduce any further. If you do that in a couple of steps, if you maybe divided by two and then divided by three, no problem. You're still going to end up here. Now, let's look at this again. We could have done this a little cleaner. There's some pre-multiplication work we can do to make this go a little smoother for us. Even at this stage, you can reduce if you see an opportunity. For example, 3 and 6 are both divisible by 3. It doesn't matter that they're in different fractions. All that matters is one of them is in the numerator and one of them is in the denominator. If you happen to notice this, it is okay to divide this number by 3, also divide this number by 3. One on the top, one on the bottom. 3 divided by 3 Let's write this again. If you do that, you'll get 6 divided by 3 is 2. And up here, you get 3 divided by 3 is 1 over 5. That's better. The numbers have been trimmed down a bit. We can even do it again. We have 4 over 2 here. Why not trim that down? We can go divided by 2, divided by 2. Notice, this one, I had one number in each fraction. This one, both numbers are in the same fraction. Either one is fine. The only thing you have to have is one of them must be upstairs, the other one must be downstairs. If you have that, you're good to go. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1 times 1 fifth. We can't reduce it any further, so now we multiply. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 5 is 5. Same answer either way. This can be a, good, a really good way to do it if these numbers are kind of large because by reducing them you keep them from getting really large when you do the multiplication. Going this way you end up with an intermediate fraction here that can be scary big sometimes and difficult to reduce just because the numbers are so big you're not familiar with them. Imagine getting something like 252 over 288 and you have to reduce that thing much easier to do the reduction beforehand when you have smaller, more manageable numbers.